Welcome to this presentation with the title Teaching Axiomatic Design for Long-Term Sustainable Introduction of Industry for Zero in Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. So let's start with the introduction and aim of this work. In this work, we want to show and develop a teaching format for addressing long-term sustainability when small and medium-sized enterprises are introducing industry for zero in their companies. So as already mentioned, the focus is on small and medium-sized enterprises as they usually struggle also in implementing new and emerging technologies. And as uh, we want also to support them in uh, doing this in a sustainable and ethical way. Therefore, profitable and sustainable ethical design solutions should be exploited, uh, should, should be achieved by exploiting emergent technologies. We want to create future engineers that know how to develop technical systems as well as social technical systems from a certain ethical uh, aspect or point of view. We think that axiomatic design can be used as a good basis for such a sustainable design in industry for zero. And finally, we want to propose also learning factories for industry for zero for testing such designs in a very practice oriented way. So to introduce also the topic of say, sustainability and ethics in engineering, I wanted to show you here this picture from the corridor of the Worcester Polytechnic Institute, where we see painted on the wall this sentence or this first canon of ethics from the, Eng from the National Society of Professional Engineers in the United States. And this is hold paramount paramount the safety, health and welfare of the public. This means that engineers have also a certain responsibility to design technical or social technical systems that satisfy also sustainable or ethical uh, rules. So this canon includes also sustainability topics as well as ethics topics how engineers can appropriate adopt industry for zero in their system design. Based on that, we want to combine these three pillars of uh, sustainability with the economic pillar, the social side of sustainability, as well as also the ecological side of sustainability within this term sustainable production for zero. Short overview also on industry for zero and how small and medium-sized enterprises are facing this challenge. So we know that 2011, we started with the um, research on industry for zero with the foundation of this term at the Hanover Fair. In the following years, uh, the concept of industry for zero was mainly promoted or disseminated in the German speaking area later than also in other European countries. And from 2016-17 onwards, we have a lot of scientific publications and other dissemination activities worldwide, where we don't speak only about industry for zero, but also about smart manufacturing and intelligent manufacturing. We see here also that from 2016-17, we had also a certain focus on how to introduce industry for zero, not only in the larger companies, but especially also in the small and medium-sized enterprises. And this work is also part of a larger EU project named uh, SME for zero, uh, where we want to provide also guidelines how SMEs can better integrate or introduce industry for zero in their companies. Short review also on the existing work in literature. There are only few works that are addressing how to teach the adoption of industry for zero in a sustainable way in SMEs. So we see there are some works on gamification, other works that are proposing industrial system design, like the axiomatic design approach for such concepts. 
uh, other works are introducing also the concept of learning factories for practice oriented teaching for students as well as also for professionals. We have other works that are proposing external uh, trainers for employee education in industry for zero to get uh, or to introduce uh, also new knowledge. Other works that are promoting virtual learning environments um, that are suggesting workshops or seminars as well as now also in this uh, post-COVID area, era, uh, e-learning techniques. So then I want to give also an introduction into our main approach that is used in this work, which is axiomatic design. In axiomatic design, we work basically in four design domains. We start with the customer domain, defining what are the customer wishes or what are the customer needs or CNs. These are then translated into the functional domain where we try to define what are the functional requirements, what could be also some constraints of our system design. Then we have to find the physical solution in the physical domain, therefore the design parameter, design solution for each of the functional requirements. And we have to do a decomposition process, which means we have to go from top to the down, from the abstract to the tangible results for getting design guidelines that are then transformed from the physical domain in the process domain, which means that are transformed or realized then in the implementation of a system. In axiomatic design, we usually use two axioms. The first one is the independence axiom. Here we uh, check the independence of functional elements in our system design, and thus reducing complexity. And the second axiom is the information axiom, which is used in case of alternative candidates of design solutions, uh, minimizing the information content and selecting that solution with the highest probability of success. So after this introduction, let's see the research questions. The first research question was how to use axiomatic design also to support engineers in a certain long-term sustainable design of cyber physical production systems. The second research question was how we can develop or provide an appropriate format for teaching uh, how to design sustainable industry for zero solutions. And in the next slides, I want to give you an answer on these questions. So starting with our AD approach for long-term sustainable design, we see there are also some difficulties uh, when we introduce new emerging technologies in smaller companies. Very often there's a short-sighted and hasty introduction of such technologies because we want to be faster as our competitor. In addition, we have often also a certain mental blockade in the selection and introduction of the right technologies, which could then also uh, be a problem uh, from a sustainability aspect or from an ethical aspect. Therefore, it's important to address the right needs and for satisfying these needs also to select the right technologies and therefore being efficient. And we think that axiomatic design can be used as a good basis for this. So in our axiomatic design approach, we start with step one, which is the identification of the customer needs. Here we can use literature analysis, we can ask users, and we can ask also or interview stakeholders. Having received this information, we can start with step two, which is the mapping and decomposition process. Therefore, we translate the customer needs into functional requirements and constraints. And starting from the highest level functional requirements, we define what is the design solution for satisfying this functional requirement. Usually on a very high and abstract level, 
uh, you are not able to identify any design guidelines. Therefore, we have to decompose the problem, therefore following a top-down approach and creating such a FR and DP tree, as it is called, in order to get at the lower level than tangible and concrete design guidelines. Here we use our two axioms. First axiom for checking the independence of our FRs, and the second axiom for uh, selecting the right design solution or design parameter in case if we have uh, alternative design solutions. In the third step, we can then implement and test our design and where we propose to use learning factories for this testing process in the process domain. Now, regarding the teaching format that we propose, let's see some learning targets that were set up in the beginning. We want to um, encourage creative thinking and solution neutral thinking. We want to make people able to collect user needs, therefore to have a user-oriented uh, analysis. We want to separate functions from the user needs. We want to reduce complexity with our axioms. We want to set up metrics for measuring also the quality of solutions. We want to use group work as well as also case studies and learning factories for practical application and also to encourage critical thinking by group work. So the proposed teaching format is a two and a half day axiomatic design short course that has been proven in several um, sh short courses that we had in different countries. On the first day, we introduce the basics of Industry for Zero and sustainability, as well as also the basics of axiomatic design, which is important to start then with the core of the workshop. After this, by the end of this first day, we usually have also a first group exercise so that people are familiar with the axiomatic design approach. And on the second day, we provide some advanced topics on axiomatic design and some examples also of real applications of the approach in industry for zero case studies from manufacturing, product development, or also healthcare design. On the second day, we start then also with group exercise. In the group work, people are discussing the problems, they collect the CNs, they work on the function requirements and constraints, they are training the decomposition process. We are setting up the design metrics with the Eclaro software, and afterwards we test the developed concepts in our learning factory lab, and we present the results. So in this slide, we want to give you a short overview of how uh, such learning factories work to practice industry for zero. See, there are some pictures of new technologies that we are using in our learning factory here in Bolzano, and where we offer to our students also complementary teaching and training in industry for zero based on digital production management, collaborative and mobile robotics, uh, the use of Industry for Zero technologies on construction sites, as well as also the use of worker assistance systems. Finally, to conclude my presentation, I want to show you also some impressions from previous workshops in Austria, Thailand, Italy, as well as also a summer school, an online summer school held in USA, Italy, Austria, and Colombia, where we have adopted this teaching format and have received a very positive feedback from the students uh, learning this axiomatic design approach and therefore uh, choosing the right needs and choosing also the right technologies. With this, I thank you for your attention.